So today I'm going to be talking about what camera is right for you. And this is a vast subject and there's any number of ways you can go when you're buying your first camera or your second camera and there's, there's almost too many options. But I'm going to try to break it down based on maybe where you want to go with your photography and what you have already, the equipment you want to buy, and your budget because that's really the most important thing. Uh, these things are expensive and you know, that's going to determine a lot of uh, you know which brand you're going to go with and which type of camera, sensor size, all those different things. So stick around. So over the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about the Canon M50 a lot. And we put out four videos that were really specific to the M50. And those four videos have 25,000 views. And we've gotten comments from everyone asking if it would be a great camera for professional use. Would this be a good first camera? Or should I buy this camera instead of that camera? And I think what this has led us to believe is that a lot of you are searching for maybe your first camera or you're upgrading from a point and shoot or a cell phone or maybe you have a DSLR, an older DSLR and you want to buy your next camera. You're not sure if you should make that jump to DSLR, like a next level DSLR or maybe go into the mirrorless world. So I'm going to talk a little bit about just cameras in general today and you know why you might want to buy a, a certain camera and the thing that everything, it, what's really going to determine which way you go is first of all your budget how much do you have to spend how do you think you're going to use this are you an enthusiast photographer that just casually likes to put your camera in auto and just make sure that you'll get some nice pictures that way or are you do you have aspirations on perhaps professional work or really getting into it and really you know adding different lenses and trying to you know really learn photography and and see what these cameras can do so the first thing I'll say is more than the camera body and you know if you've been shooting for a long time you may agree with me I don't know I have two cameras here and I just I'm showing you this just to make a point both of these cameras look identical this is a Nikon D7000 that I bought nine years ago it's got a 16 megapixel sensor in it and it's you can buy them used now for three four hundred dollars this is my Nikon D750. When it came out four years ago, I paid $2,300 for it. It's a full frame DSLR with a 24 megapixel sensor. Now what I've done here is I've swapped the two lenses on these. And this is the kit lens that came with my D7000. It's um, an 18 to 140 and it's a DX lens made for a crop sensor. This is a Tamron 70 to 200 f2.8. It's a professional lens. And so if, you, if I had the same amount of money, because these two setups right here are about the same amount of money, the better full frame camera with the not so great lens or the older camera with the much better lens on it. So if I was buying a new camera today, what I would do personally is, and I had a limited budget, let's say I had a finite amount of money to start with, I would buy a used camera that's maybe a year or two old, maybe three years old, and I would try to get myself the best lens I could have. Because this lens has gone through three camera bodies with me already. The D7000, my D600, the D610 I had, and now the D750. And this lens just keeps rolling along, and I have other lenses that are older. To this point also, this is Eric's 70 to 200 Canon lens that I borrowed to use on the M50. He's had this lens for years and years, and this has gone with him through different camera bodies. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with this, and he could have this lens for another 20 years and never have to replace it. So while the camera body is important, what you're going to find is as you get better as a photographer, the lenses are really what are gonna make the image. And this kit lens, even though it's on a full frame professional camera, is not going to give me the same image as this professional lens on a more consumer camera body. I would take this any day over this setup right here. Give me an older camera with a better lens rather than the latest technology in a camera with, you know, a kit lens, say. So just a little, that's a little 
something to think about as you're making these decisions. I'm not going to be talking about point-and-shoot cameras here because they really are not used that often and your cell phone really is your point-and-shoot camera. And I'm not going to be talking about super expensive DSLRs or mirrorless cameras, you know, something in the three, four thousand dollar range. I don't think that's what you guys are looking for. Um, the M50 is one of those cameras that is a good camera and it falls right into that five, six hundred dollar sweet spot where a lot of people are looking to spend and they're not really sure what they want just yet. If you're ready to buy, you have the choice of micro four thirds, you have mirrorless cameras in a APS-C size sensor and a full frame sensor, or you can go with a DSLR in a APS-C size sensor and a full frame sensor. And really, depending on the camera brand you buy, there might not be much difference between the two. So let's say for Canon, the 80D and the M50 have the same sensor inside it. That's where the budget and the form factor comes into play. You have the same image making ability. Uh, and actually the M50 is a little more versatile because you can use M mount lenses, which will give the camera a super small form factor. And that's one of the benefits of mirrorless, where the ADD is gonna give you a more DSLR like, uh, more heavy duty substantial feel. It's a little bit more money. It's a few hundred dollars more money. And you're going to be able to use the um, EFS and EF mount lenses on it. That's one of those things where you maybe go to the store and hold them. The, you know, that's the, one of the things also, you know, we look at all these things online, but until you pick it up, when you walk into a camera store and, or you go to a trade show or one of these photo expos and you can actually hold all these cameras, you might pick something up and say, oh, I, you know, I don't like this. It's too small in my hand. It's too big for my hand. It's heavy. It's not heavy. So these are the things that you're going to have to really, for yourself, go see if what, which one feels better for you. The Micro Four Thirds cameras like the Olympus and the Panasonics and the Fujis, they're all really nice cameras. They, they're high level cameras. Some of them are considered pro bodies. Um, for me, I wouldn't buy those. I don't want a Micro Four Thirds sensor. I, and I've seen it already with the crop sensor, putting the same lens. When I put this lens on the M50, the image I get out of it at all the exact same settings and focal length as Eric's 5D Mark IV, it's not the same image. You lose depth of field. So if you're a portrait photographer or you think you want to shoot portraits, I would buy a used full frame camera if I could. You can get a used Nikon D610 or a Canon 6D. You can get them for, you know, six, seven, eight hundred dollars and they will make amazing images and you will have a full frame sensor. You'll have all the benefits of the high ISO abilities of a full frame sensor. And when you're shooting portraits, you get that beautiful shallow depth of field that you're just not going to get from a crop sensor. Now, with that being said, crop sensor cameras are very useful for other things. If you're a sports shooter, the crop factor on this camera, when I put it on the M50, this 70 to 200 now has a reach of 300. So for people who shoot wildlife and sports photography, that long reach is great. So if you're on a budget and you want to, you know, your hobby is sports photography or you're shooting birds or wildlife, maybe you want to get a, um, a smaller sensor so that you can extend the focal length of all your lenses. The Nikon D500 is a professional camera but it's built purposely with a crop sensor. And I believe the Canon 7D Mark II is the same way. These are professional level cameras, but they're made for a different purpose. So if you find yourself going in that direction, you might want to look at a crop sensor camera that can handle, you know, all of this pro glass. And as you grow into the camera and into your shooting and you see the way you want to go, if that's the, your preference in photography, something like this might be great. The mirrorless cameras have a smaller form factor. If you're into video, I would say you really want to look at a mirrorless camera. Uh, Canon's autofocus is great. So if you're in the Canon ecosystem already, I think you're fine as far as video goes. Most of their cameras from the M50 to the 6D to the 80D, all the way up to their Pro DSLRs, really good autofocus, really good video qualities. But Nikon just came out with the Z6 and 7, and they are finally making some good cameras for video. Sony has always been great for video, and pretty much any of their cameras will work well for video. If, you're, if video is a big component to what you're doing, the Canon M50 will be a great camera for that. 
Sony's cameras will also be great for that. But you, there are little things you have to remember. The flip out screen that we have on the Canon cameras is so beneficial. I look right now, I can see myself. I see what I'm doing. I could see that this hand just went out of the frame. I could see that my head's out of the frame here. With a Nikon camera that doesn't flip out, you, you're guessing, you don't see that. So that's, a, that's an issue for someone like me that uses the camera for video also. Sony just came out with their new A6400, I think it's called. The camera flips straight up, which is great. You can see yourself, but if I put a microphone on top of the camera, I'm blocking the video screen. So, you know, sometimes these are all little things that you may not realize until you go to do something and you're like, ah, oh, you know, this is, this is no good for me. But the form factor of a mirrorless camera is great. And one of the things I really love about something like the M50 or the Sony cameras, or even the Micro Four Thirds, if you don't need, you know, a pro level camera, if you don't need that shallow depth of field, the form factor is so small, you can throw them in a pocket. Fuji makes some great cameras and the Olympus, those cameras, they have these little lenses and you throw them right in a bag in your pocket and you have a, a really great image quality from a very small form factor. When I go, I'm actually in a couple of weeks, I'm going away and I'm taking only the Canon M50 with me. There's a little pancake lens that comes with it and I can just throw this in my pocket. I don't have to worry about lugging around all this gear. This is not easy to walk around with when you're on vacation and you, you're doing things. I'm constantly having to hold this or it's hanging on my hip. It'd be nice to just throw my camera in a little backpack or in my wife's bag or in my pocket. So that's one of the reasons you want to consider a mirrorless camera is the size and the form factor. And most of the mirrorless cameras now have really, really good sensors in them. And the full frame cam, uh, sensors from Sony are every bit as good or better than the Canon and Nikon. In fact, I think Nikon uses Sony sensors in all of their cameras. So you lose nothing that way. So you really have to decide how you're going to use your camera. You have to develop a budget. The camera itself is going to cost you X amount of dollars, but then you're going to have to put lenses on it. And that's what makes your image. If you're a good photographer, you can make a decent image with most camera lens combinations. If you know what you're doing, you understand how the focal lengths work and what, you're, what you can do with each one. But I would, Personally, I would rather hold on to a camera body for three, four, five, even six years and put build up a nice lens collection for whatever ecosystem that I've bought into, whether it's Sony, Nikon, Canon, Olympus, Fuji, any of these, Panasonic, whatever you're into, whatever brand you buy, the lenses are going to make the difference. I know this doesn't answer the question of which camera should you buy, but I can't answer that for you. When you watch someone like me, I have a particular style of shooting. Eric has his. You know, you watch someone like Tony Northrup, he has his, Jared Pollan. Everybody shoots differently. And, and, you, and if you follow any of these people, you, you know that. Someone like Scott Kelby shoots sports. Jared Pollan shoots concerts. Tony Northrup loves wildlife photography. Everybody shoots everything. But we all seem to gravitate towards something. There's, a, there's an image style that we like. I tend to shoot wide landscapes. That, that seems to be how I'm drawn. Eric likes to focus in and use his 135 and pull out all the details out of, a, out of a situation. So you have to know yourself a little bit and you may not yet as a photographer. So you wanna buy into an ecosystem that's gonna let you grow, that you can afford. The reason I like Sony, Canon, and Nikon is if you start with one of their lower level, mid-level, entry-level cameras, you can buy their better lenses. And then at some point, if you do want to upgrade to a full frame sensor or, you know, you, once you're in that ecosystem, there's a lot of room to move. There are adapters that let you use older lenses on newer camera bodies. All of my Nikon gear, if I decided to buy a Z6 or Z7, it's going to work. And I have good lenses, so I don't have to worry about that. Like with the Canon that I have here, I have to invest in all new glass if I wanted to go the Canon route. So a lot of camp photographers lately have been migrating over to Sony because the sensors are great, the cameras are small, the performance is unbelievable, the ISO performance is great. They have two dual memory card slots in all their cameras. I've seen a lot of my photography friends sell all their Nikon gear or all their Canon gear and, and jump ship and go into the Sony world. So, you know, there's a there's some research that you have to do to see which way you want to go. Look at the prices of what lenses go for. See which cameras have a good used market because we buy a lot of gear used. There's nothing wrong with buying used lenses and even camera bodies. So if there's a 
one camera system that has a lot of used gear out there on the market, you may want to look into that and start your you know, collection that way. It's a good way to save some money. So I hope this shed a little light onto, you know, maybe what you might want for a style of photography that you're going for, or I know there's probably a camera that I'm not talking about that somebody loves, and there are so many cameras out there, and actually most of them are very good. And there, it all comes down to little things that we get used to, you know, little, uh, yeah, I like to have a button here or a dial there, or, you know, I shoot in low light, so I need a big sensor for the ISO performance. Everyone's environment is a little bit different. Everybody's budget is a little bit different and everybody has a different shooting style. Most of these cameras will do fine for you, but it does pay to get out there and actually feel them, hold them, use them, watch all the videos and research, but in the end, I think buying into a system that you can grow into is the most important thing. You don't want to buy into something that is going to be limiting at some point. You don't know if in three or four or five or ten years you're going to want a full-frame DSLR to shoot weddings professionally and you have a collection of glass that you've been building for the last four or five years and, and you're going to want that. And maybe you have a micro four-thirds system that just isn't going to perform the way you want it to and now you have to kind of scrap that and start over so you know not to say that you couldn't do it with that but you know that's what I mean there's all sorts of different ways to go about this in um, an upcoming video I actually asked for all the raw files from uh, a few of the guys that we went and shot into the city with um, I'm gonna have a Sony raw file a couple of Nikon different camera body raw files um, the M50 Eric and our friend Nick was shooting with 5D Mark II's. So there's, you're gonna be able to see, you know, what these cameras capture in this, oh, right off the sensor. Some of them are full frame sensors, some of them are not. So maybe that'll help you out a little bit. When you see how good all of them are across the board, you know, really doesn't matter. When you put a good lens on any of these cameras, and, and we were all shooting with good lenses. And that's why these images, when I show them to you, are gonna look very similar, because the lenses were all good. So look forward to that video. I'm also going to be going to Lancaster in a few days and I'm going to take my Nikon with the 70 to 200 on it and I'm going to take the M50 with this 70 to 200 on it and I want to do some comparison shooting and really see you know if there's a big difference between a full frame sensor and the smaller APS-C size sensor in the M50 and I want to just put them up against each other and just random shooting just you know running around and shooting so look out for that one too. Uh, if you have any questions or comments or you know opinions on this, let me know. If there's something I missed, which I'm sure there is, let me know in the comments. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you want more content like this. And we will see you in the next video.